Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here with uh, Queen City Health Center at Wellness Way Affiliate. The Wellness Way is a group we've joined and working, been working with our doctors all over the country. And hey guys, today's video is gonna completely change the way you look at shoulder and neck problems. And whether you have a shoulder pain, a neck pain, or both, many times they come together, I'm gonna help you understand, hopefully help you understand what is actually causing your shoulder and neck pain, okay? Many times if it gets bad enough, it'll come up and cause a headache as well, or it can actually go the opposite direction, go down to the hands and fingertips and make that worse. And, and when it does, it is it can really just uh, rule your world. You know, neck and shoulder pain are right up there. Back pain is the top reason people go to their doctor. It's actually one of the top reasons, um, along with back pain, why uh, we do why we have this opioid epidemic where so many people have been prescribed opioid medications. Typically, the medical answer for a shoulder problem is bursitis rotator cuff, those are the main two things, frozen shoulder, but their answers for those are horrible. Their answer is a cortisone shot, which is gonna deteriorate the tissue in your shoulder. It's actually gonna cause um, breakdown of the um, ligaments and tendons. Go on the Mayo Clinic and research uh, cortisone shots. They'll say exactly what I just told you on their website. And so they're very dangerous and there's things you shouldn't be using and many times they don't even work, which is really frustrating. Um, or they'll give you an, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication or even a steroid um, pill or if it's bad, it gets bad enough, they'll recommend a surgery. Sometimes they'll do physical therapy, but the truth is, is the physical therapy uh, typically isn't really the right answer for that. And I'll walk you through, it is part of the answer, and so I don't wanna say it's not the answer, it's part of the answer, but I'll walk you through typically what we see with shoulder problems and how to really get a long lasting result because at the end of the day, you wanna get rid of the problem, not just get a real, little bit of relief so it keeps coming back, right? And so it's about, it's about understanding the body. I always say you need to become your own health expert. This is another addition to help you become that health expert by understanding how that all works. So I got a great PowerPoint and everything for you guys today, and we're gonna start to dive into this. And so neck and shoulder pain really are big deals, okay? Most of the time it's because we have such a sedentary lifestyle, but many times it's how we sleep at night. It could be an old sports injury, whatever that might be. Hey, even your nutrition plays a role in this from when it comes to inflammation in your body. I've seen people just change their diets and a lot of their neck and shoulder problems go away. It really can be simplified though. So let me simplify it for you guys. Let me just get my PowerPoint going here so we can simplify it. Okay, or so you can understand it. So this is our purpose and mission. The reason I'm shooting these videos, the reason we um, even have our clinics and wanna help people is I wanna offer freedom by teaching people to take control of their health. I want you to become your own health expert, although you may need someone like myself or anyone else to teach you, to guide you, to give you, um, you know, our professional recommendations, and even maybe some types of care, like chiropractic care or physical therapy or massage or, or, or um, nutritional supplementation type stuff. You really should become your own health expert, so you don't have to constantly be wondering who do I follow, what doctor is right, and everything else. Be understanding a philosophy, and the definition really of health is that your body is functioning and healing at 100%. So any recommendation from a doctor should follow that guideline of we need to get your body functioning and healing properly and better. Any medication or surgery is gonna do the opposite of that. So it's always the last case scenario. It's only when you have such a big issue that there is no other answer. And I will tell you, that is very rare. They use these things way too often, which is why we have an opioid epidemic and opi opioid problems. That all stems back to orthopedics. It does. Too many surgeries, too many, um, yeah, too much invasive type care. So let's really look at shoulder. So what's the cause of just say straight shoulder pain? This is from the Mayo Clinic. So I just pulled this up and said, hey, let's look at what causes shoulder pain. Okay, so you can see them here, it's avascular necrosis, that'd be an extreme example, brachial plexus injury, that's all the nerves coming out through here. We'll talk about that. Uh, obviously a broken arm, broken um, collarbone, that can do it, bursitis, inflammation in the bursa, I'm gonna talk to you about that. Frozen shoulder, not what most people think it is. Most of the time they go to the doctor and they do all this in crazy trying to tear the shoulder muscles and everything else to get them to loosen up, or steroid shots. It's almost always a nerve issue and it stems from this C4 area of your neck and it's a very a very simple thing to get rid of. It's when you're, when you're well, I won't dive too much into it. I'll talk to you about it in a little bit. But hey, so frozen shoulder, heart attacks, obviously that's a big one, um, but that's not gonna be a long-term one, unfortunately. And then um, you got all these on there. So I won't, I won't read them all, but you can see these are some of the main causes of Shoulder problems, neck pain. What's the main causes of neck pain? Muscle strains, worn joints, meaning like broken down uh, the joints of your neck, com actual compression of the nerves, which is like your tingling, numbness, and even pain, um, injuries, and then even certain diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, meningitis, cancers, 
things like that can cause neck pain. And so these are from the Mayo Clinic. So I just want to get your generic, hey, here's the cause of these things. But let's, let's actually figure out, I want to teach you today so you can figure out what the cause of your shoulder and or neck pain is. And when I say shoulder, I'm talking about all the way into here, the shoulder joint, the trap, uh, trapezius muscles, the neck, all those things. I want you to really um, understand those, those areas. So we have the shoulder and neck complex. Okay, let me just um, see here real quick. Yeah, I'm just gonna increase this. So we got the shoulder and the neck complex here, and you can see all the muscles are really connected. You can see on the left side here, you have the trapezius muscle, which uh, that tra trapezius muscle actually Right there, yeah, you can see that. And it goes all the way to your scapula, part of your scapular spine. And then off of that comes your deltoid. So that's all really intricately connected. If you shift to the right side of this picture, you're gonna see levator scapula, which is a muscle. When, when someone has pain, hey, when somebody has pain right, um, right in like this area right here, it's like a knot right there. And every time you turn your head or even go back like that, it's like, like a literally like a stabbing thing in the back of your neck, right above the scapula area almost always is the levator scapula muscle. And you can see that connects, it goes behind those muscles and connects all right in here in your neck. You have the muscles through here in your neck that come all the way down, all the way through here. Then you have your rhomboids right in this area, scapula to the spine. So you can see these are all really intricately connected. You even have muscles in the front part of your spine that connect to the collarbone. To the collarbone. So it's one really a complex of muscular system there. And you can see how that can start to become um, and both problems, neck and uh, shoulder pain at the same time, okay? And so let me just make sure I have PowerPoints here, cool. Okay, so this is your deep neck and upper back musculatures here, okay? And I, I'm going through this, so you can see why you might feel what you feel. You got this longissimus service muscle here, and when we look at that muscle, let me just make sure I'm pointing to the right step here. So you got this muscle right here, right in this area. So this longissimus services, that's another area probably coming from your back around to the neck. You have levator, scapula, your scalenes, all your scalenes here many times can cause neck pain. One of the major th issues causing uh, headaches is gonna be these occipital muscles right here. A lot of people don't realize, I'm gonna give you a, a bonus here on headaches, is a lot of people don't realize that any kind of stress, whether it's chemical, whether it's physical or emotional, will actually affect It'll actually affect this back part of your neck right here because those occipital muscles attach to what's called the dura mater of your spinal cord. And when that, when you go into a fight or flight mode, whether it's from a chemical stress, a physical stress, or an emotional stress, you're, you're, or, or if you've lost the curve in your neck from staring at a computer all day or, or you know text messaging, it stretches your dura mater, and your dura mater is those muscles are attached to it, and they'll literally cause spasming and, and pressure and, and tension and pain in those muscles, and that's where you get that headache in the back of your head. I tell people a lot of times, this is like your, when people have a hangover, they'll feel it back in the back part of their neck. And that's because of that right there, that, that, that dehydration and the stretching of the dura mater. Okay. So it's really big to understand the physiology of the body. Okay. Now, when we look at the shoulder and I, I have this picture, I like this picture a lot because, um, ultimately, you can see all the nerves, and hopefully my arrow is working for you guys. I don't know if it is, hopefully it is. But you can see all the nerves coming out of her neck. These yellow things are nerves coming all the way down the arm. And it's a big bundle of nerves. If you look at the cartoon picture of a guy, you can see that all that yellow coming out of the neck, that's what feeds the muscles to your traps, to your chest, to your shoulders, to your biceps, to your triceps, all the way down to your fingertips. That is what controls the entire arm. If we cut those nerves, that's called your brachial plexus, okay? Brachial's arm, your arm plexus. And ultimately, if we cut those nerves, you wouldn't be able to use your arm. If you've had, if you're a football player and you've ever had a, um, you've ever had a stinger, or a, I think it's called a stinger, where they, where they, you get hit and it kind of stretches you like this, it pulls those, those nerves and it literally calls numbness and like a lightning bolt all the way down your arm, okay? So this, this area, this complex, it's all connected. Most of the time people have shoulder problems, and this is my experience of 10 years in practice. Most of the time people have shoulder problems, it's because of the shoulder not moving properly, gets subluxated and locked out, and I'll show you what that means here in a second, and the cervical spine and the neck, okay? So the lower neck uh, nerves, whether it's C5, C4, C6, uh, C7, usually the, the, the main ones for the shoulders are gonna be your C5, C4. When those are subluxated or disc issues or degenerative changes, it will actually cause 
breakdown in the muscular system of the shoulder, which can cause instabilities. It can also cause direct pain to the shoulder, right? And also create decreased healing to the shoulder. So these are all big things that we'll see with shoulder problems. And many times these are diagnosed as something else. It's usually diagnosed as a bursitis or a rotator cuff issue. I can't tell you how many times I've had patients come in as rotator cuff issues and they don't have a rotator cuff issue. They have a nerve problem. And when you get pressure off, or when you get the neck moving again, it removes irritation and inflammation to the nerves and simple shoulder adjustments will actually help. One thing right here, well, I'm, I'm moving ahead of myself. I'm gonna get to some pretty cool stuff when it comes to why what, what actually causes these things. Okay, so you also have your bursa. This is what they call, uh, and when they tell you you have bursitis, they're talking about these sacs, these blue things, these fluid-filled sacs that sit on your shoulder, these fluid-filled blue sacs here, and they ultimately their, goal, their job is to sit between tendons and bones so that the tendon can move easily over the bone, kind of like a pulley system, and the, and, the, and the bursa will sit underneath that. And you can see you have a lot of different bursas in that shoulder system, and they allow for cushioning of those nerves so it doesn't rub against your bone. If you have poor biomechanics in your shoulder, or you had a direct injury, it's usually poor biomechanics, so it creates repetitive rubbing too much rubbing on those um, bursas and they will become inflamed. They will actually build up. They can get to the point, I've seen them before, I've literally seen them like the size of a, uh, on an elbow, it's like the size of a tennis ball or, or a baseball on the elbow where they'll really fully build up the fluid and have to have them drained. The answer, the medical answer for this is sometimes they'll say rest but, or take NSAIDs, um, which are horrible for your health, but many times they'll inject that area to, with a steroid, a cortisone shot. So cortisone is our body's strongest anti-inflammatory. However, they use a synthetic version to inject it directly into the spot, and their idea is they're gonna kill off inflammation. And many times that will get rid of pain for a short period of time, and I mean like anywhere from three to six months maybe. At, at a lo that's a long time for, for those to work. So, so, so that's the reason with the answers, but rarely are these the problems. Even if you do have bursitis, it's not usually the problem, it's the side effect of you having a biomechanical issue in your shoulder, okay? Hope you guys are following me here, hope this is making a lot of sense. This is your rotator cuff. So I always hear, okay, we have a rotator cuff problem. Give me one second, I have pushed the wrong button, okay. I have to be able to look at my screen too so to know what we're looking at here. So, yeah, one second, guys. Okay, so it says we have a rotator cuff problem here, right? And many times patients will come in, they say they have a rotator cuff. This is what they're talking about when they tell you you have a rotator cuff problem, okay? So we're talking about these tendons and muscles that attach to the head of your femur, or sorry, the head of your humerus, and they go on and attach to the scapula as well. And, t and um, rotator cuff is typically like a either a slight tear in those muscles. You also have ligament, ligaments that surround the rotator as well, and they're talking about those as well. But these are rotator cuff muscles, okay? A rotator cuff tear of the ligaments, if it tears bad enough, yeah, you, mean, you probably have to have surgery because you're not going to heal ligaments. But a lot of times it's just a tendonitis in the tendon of the muscle or even trigger points and knots in these muscle bellies. And we can help release those trigger points and knots and restore the biomechanics that caused the problem in the first place. Gets you changing the way you do um, ergonomics and sitting at a computer and the problem actually will stay away and be gone. And this is going to be what I feel have, have seen as to be probably the leading cause of the neck and shoulder pains is sitting at a computer with your shoulders rolled inwards, specifically if you're right-handed, that right shoulder or right hand going on a mouse and leaning forward or on a keypad like this. And what I find almost, this is maybe exaggerated, but a good majority of the patients that when I feel their shoulders, I'll actually put my hands like literally on their shoulder joints at the same time. It's my hand always goes to the right one. And when it does that, it, I can feel inflammation and I feel this shoulder like this. It's like rotated inwards and locked from doing this. And it's pretty cool because we'll just, with an adjustment, I can go in and just literally release it. Many times you'll get a popping noise and it's just the best relief in the world. But you can imagine if your shoulder's rotated, you're pulling all those muscles I showed you, you're pulling them constantly being stretched and, you're, and every time you do something, it's, it's putting um, abnormal motion into those muscles. And you're also gonna get, um, uh, it's also gonna affect the cartilage, it's gonna affect your rotator cuff. These posterior ones are always gonna be um, tight. And then when you poke back here, and it's super tender, that's because you're stuck in this rotated inwards motion all the time. That's gonna affect your bicep muscles. It can actually affect the neurology if it gets inflamed enough to your fingertips. And so we can adjust that back. The adjustment gets pressure, I'm sorry, that opens up that joint and allows to relief there. 
and at the same time we adjust the lower part of the neck, the C4, C5, C6 nerve roots, depending on where the problem is, and traction the neck and pump, get the discs moving, and then introduce a curve back into the neck. This is the other problem that comes with sitting at a computer, is this forward head posture. All the way to the head is going right where you see that arrow pointing, right into the lower neck, upper back area, and it's like literally taking normal weight distribution that should go evenly throughout your spine into one spot. It takes all the weight of your head, puts it in one spot, and it can lead from everything from inflammation and joint problems to actual disc herniations if it stays there long enough. And these are the people that have been at a computer for years. You look at their posture, they have forward head posture. If you have forward head posture, you have neck and, and eventually will have shoulder and arm problems if that's you. Okay, so we have to change that. So by changing your ergonomics, that's a first step, just changing the way that you sit will make a big difference, right? This is a good picture of ideal typing posture where you can see a screen. If you have a laptop, get, a, get books, put it underneath your laptop and get an external keyboard and mouse so you can actually use those keyboard mouse and um, put them closer to you. You see how the shoulders aren't reaching out and rolled inwards so you're not constantly stretching the shoulder joints and the muscles and the, the muscles going to your neck, okay? So that's gonna be my, my number one reason I see shoulder and neck problems. Of course, it can happen from a car accident. Um, that neck, you can get whiplash, and that can lead to a shoulder and neck problem. It could come from um, sleeping on your stomach. If you sleep like this all night long, your pressure and damage all through here, and especially if you're up like this all night long, sleeping like that, that can be a big issue as well that will cause it. So it really is just getting to the um, root cause of the problem. You can have sports injuries, overactive injuries. I'll tell you what, I've had, I've had baseball players, this is really cool, they'll get impingement syndromes from constantly pitching like this. And what will happen, let me see if I can go back on my PowerPoint here. I'm just, just give me one second. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you this. This is really cool, especially for you baseball players. Um, yeah, so let's see here, transition, okay. So right here, in that spot right there, build it up here. Yeah, so right in this spot where those bursts are, you can actually have your tendons going through there and muscles going through there and it can get inflamed and impinge that area. They call it AC joint impingement. And um, we can actually um, adjust that joint. That joint will lock up and we adjust it and it feels amazing where the, scap the scapula and the clavicle meet. We can actually adjust that joint and we can actually go in and release some of these muscles that build up. It's really painful to do, but it works. And I've had baseball players that come in, they're supposed to be getting surgeries and we get them back on the field um, for everything from AC joint issues to um, Tommy John's issue, not getting Tommy John surgery with elbow problems. And there's certain techniques you can do muscularly that will do that. But it almost always, again, it's a biomechanical problem and a neck problem. And that's what led to their actual symptom or what they got diagnosed with. I hope that makes sense, okay? So knowing that there's just way more to it than, um, than um, inflammation. Inflammation isn't a cause of anything. Inflammation is caused by stress. And if you have inflammation in your shoulder, you have stress in your shoulder. We have to find out why you have stress in your shoulder and start to remove the interference so your body can heal itself. That's the answer to your health long-term. I think hopefully uh, if you're anyone that has some common sense, that makes sense. So this is what I want you guys to do. These are how you get lasting results. Number one, you gotta find, have to find the cause. You have to test. The testing that we do is gonna be um, range of motion testing, feeling, actually feeling the shoulder, feeling the neck, uh, postural checks, and x-rays. The x-rays will tell us so much about what your neck is doing and what your shoulders are doing. After we do that, after we find the cause, we start to restore the motion back in the joints, in your lower neck and in your shoulders. Okay? with chiropractic care. It's the most effective thing in 10 years of practice. I've tried everything, trust me. It is the most effective thing for getting rid of shoulder and neck pain. Then we restore the biomechanics and retrain the body. Your body has a muscle memory. When I talked about the shoulder being rolled in, that adjustment releases the shoulder, but these muscles are still really tight and these muscles are still very weak. So we have to retrain the body by doing certain physical therapy and physical rehab, retraining of the muscles. Most people skip, if they go to their doctor, they send them straight to the rehab part and they skip getting motion back in the joint and actually doing the proper test to find the, re, um, the right cause of the problem. After we restore the body and retrain the muscles, 
or as uh, at the same time, I guess, we want to maintain proper ergonomics. Change the way you work on a computer, change the way you sleep at night, really change your daily activities to uh, make sure that you're not causing more stress into the shoulder because that's what caused the problem in the first place. That makes sense, guys? Hopefully that makes a ton of sense because it makes a lot of sense to me. It seems pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's the video for you guys. Hey, to get connected with us, I want you to join the Queen City Health Center, Your Health Now Facebook group. Simply ask to be a part of that. Search Queen City Health Center, Your Facebook, or Your, your Health Now. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m., I'm doing a live video on Facebook and Instagram. It's shift your thinking, shift your health with different topics. It could be immune response, which we did last week. It could be eczema, which we're gonna do this week. We'll talk about digestive health, hormones, all the different things you can think of. And we're gonna continue to do these kind of muscular videos we talked about today. Number three, get on our podcast. We got a great, we just started it four weeks ago. Excited about it. Owning Your Health Podcast, go on um, iTunes, search Owning Your Health Podcast. It's me and two other guys just having a blast talking to you about how to become your own health expert. Hey, if you want specific help from us, schedule a 15-minute phone consult. You do that by going to queencityhealthcenter.com and you can come directly into the office if you'd like or if you'd like to talk first, just schedule a 15-minute phone consult. That's a free consult, okay? That's an opportunity to really connect with me and see possibilities, see how we can help you. Cool? All right, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got a lot out of it. And hey, continue to watch. We'll continue to bring you good information and, and teach you how to be the, your own health expert. Please share this video. I think there's a lot of people out there that are getting um, injections that should not be getting injections, surgeries that should not be getting surgeries, and we could really save and transform lives. I mean, these people get, end up on opioid and pain meds. I've heard of many of them actually becoming heroin addicts. It's the number one. Believe it or not, opioids is uh, being an opioid ad ad addict turns into a heroin act. It's the number one reason people become heroin acts is because it's easier to get than opioids. Big deal, all right? You guys can be the difference you wanna see in this world by sharing stuff like this. Love you, you have an awesome day. We'll talk to you later.